evening, one and all. Welcome to another live stream at Church on the Go in Newmarket, Ontario. I'm Assistant Pastor Curtis Alexander. I, I'm Assistant Pastor Steve Coates, who is off camera at the moment. But you'll be able to hear his tambourine as he shakes it up to the Lord and worships the Lord with us. And uh, we are going to be uh, posting this later on to YouTube. So those that are not on Facebook will be able to watch the live stream later on Facebook. We have a whole list of videos both on YouTube and on Facebook for those who want to catch up on the reruns, praise God. So, um, I'm just checking my uh, live stream feed here, and I see, okay, good, good, we're on, and I see someone's joined us already, so welcome, welcome, and uh, just going to add that, praise God, just checking out. So, we want to pray and ask the Lord for his blessing, but first just a quick reminder that there are two links on the description of this video. The first link is the link to the lyrics, so you can click on our folder and find the correct lyrics and sing along with us. Um, they're also on the screen here on the TV. Um, also, the other link is the link to our teaching graphics. So if you want to learn more, you can follow that link to our current folder of teaching graphics, which we will be referring to tonight, which we will use on the TV, but you can also see them on your screen at home if you would like. You can do a split screen on your tablet or whatever device you're using. Um, and you'll hear the buzz of the air conditioner. That's just uh, the air conditioner working to keep us cool up here on the second floor of the Tanner and Mall, praise God. Um, so let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord. We just bless your holy name. We ask you Lord. to lead and guide, direct your uh, people, Lord. Lord, yes. give us an understanding to, give us a mind to understand the, the mind of the Lord. Give us a yes. mind to understand the mind of Christ. Give us a mind to understand, Lord, because it says we have the mind of Christ in Scripture. Lord. Help us to understand your prophetic, prophetic themes. Yes. Help us to understand the many layers of prophetic, um, it's prophetic tapestry almost, yes. where there's different threads running together. And the different threads, kind of like the priest's garments were purple and blue, and there was different colors interwoven. And those, the Lord, those threads don't lose their color, right. but they do form a different kind of pattern or color when all combined together. Yes, but Lord, you have many weaves <clears throat> coming into this picture, and we want to understand how God operates on different levels tonight, at the same time. So Lord, we ask you to bless and guide and direct. Holy Spirit, lead us in worship. Holy Spirit, lead us in the Bible study. Give us ears to hear what you would say to your church tonight. Give us ears to hear. Give us a heart to understand. Uh, let us be encouraged and edified in our hope of our calling, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Let's start with the man, the book, and the city. As you know, that is one of my most recent songs now. And I have, um, I added it to our, I added it to our roster last year. I actually created it, or wrote it last year based on the man, Jesus Christ, the book, which is the Holy Bible, amen. and the city, which is the New Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Yes. Amen. So, and then around that we can build a framework of other doctrines, because it's all from the scriptures, praise God. Amen. So, let's sing it together. The man, the book, and the city. And if you feel like playing along with us, go right ahead and grab your instruments. I know some of you that are watching play instruments, so we're in the key of D if you want to join in.
spend eternity. If you know Amen. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, you're going to go to New Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God. The old timers knew it as Beulah Land. Yeah. Praise God. We, we actually sang that in the last song. Yeah. New Jerusalem is the Beulah Land. But here's another song that I didn't write. This is one written by Michael Card. And it uh, he borrows a lot from Revelation 21. And so when it describes the bride, he's referring to the holy city, New Jerusalem. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And so, um, this is, when we're, we're singing this, we've got to remember ourselves, we are those that God will dwell with. Amen. We are going to walk with God, God's going to walk with us. Isn't that awesome? That's what scriptures promise us. Amen. So, um, we are heavenly minded tonight. Uh, so, it's key of C. We use a relative minor of E minor to open. For those you, you musicians out there who want to try this.
praise you, Lord yes. Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Oh. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Honor to your name. Hallelujah. Honor to the name of Jesus. It's the name of the Father has exalted. It's the name Hallelujah. of every name. It's the name of whichever ye shall bow. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. New Jerusalem, that's where we're going. Right on. And uh, we should study the ancient words. Yes. The ancient words are one of the greatest treasures handed down to us through the ages. And Jesus paid the price on the cross with the blood. But, you know, the forefathers of the faith also paid the price by translating the Bible into English and okay. other local dialects. So this is a, spe a precious treasure that cost people their lives. Yes. And it's important that we recognize that and appreciate history. Amen. Amen. That's why we sing this song, Ancient Words. The Holy Bible is alive and active to us. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit activates it to us. Amen. It's not just an ancient text, but it's a living, Amen. it's quick and powerful. And we are instructed by the Holy Spirit using Amen. this text. Amen. Lord. Amen. And we're going to understand that hopefully some more tonight, praise Amen. God, going into the scriptures. So let's Amen. sing it together. This is actually the key of E, ancient words, key of E, Linda Shazo song. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. God. Blessings to those who are watching live and those who watch later. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's right. So our, our march down there, we passed by St. Patrick's Day and uh, we're here on this second last week of the month. Mr. Curtis can tell you what he's doing on Tuesday, but this Thursday coming we're going to have a, a uh, another live stream and it will be uh, team teaching. Scott, similar to what we do here, except yep. we'll be at the front. Yep. We'll have some people in house, and uh, occasionally we have people here uh, on Sunday nights when we do this. But uh, tonight uh, it's just us. <laughs> but um, uh, you can see next Sunday we have our brother and Chris and sister Marco back with us again, and uh, and then of course we come to the end of the month. So, uh, praise God. So, do you want to tell them about what you're doing on Tuesday? Yeah, so Tuesday, on the 22nd there, uh, Tuesday, 20, uh, uh, um, March 22nd, I will be sharing on many churches, one body. And um, um, we're going to get start getting into some of the things that Jesus is, and therefore we are too. He's the high priest. And He's the head of the body. Yeah. And we're the members of his many members' body. Yeah. If he's the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, yeah. then we are priests, kings and priests with him yes. under the head of the head priest. Yes. So then we become, but then we could learn lessons from the Old Testament. The Levitical priesthood was temporary, but we can still learn lessons from it. Amen. And then why, why they chose sons to perform the priesthood ministry. So if you want to learn more about how you are a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek, Join with us on the Tuesday. If you're local, that's the 22nd. If you're interested and you're not local, I'll send you the link afterwards. Right. So uh, just before we go off the calendar here, you can see the shamrock there, three leaves on a single stem. Yep. And we were sharing, we actually showed a couple of videos as well last Thursday on uh, St. Patrick's Day. And of course, Patrick was the uh, first one who really talked about the triune God three in one, three leaves right. on a single stem, right? right. Yes, really so uh, we have been actually teaching some on that, and we're continuing tonight uh, some of that on uh, the work of the Father. That was great. So I'm going to go there to start. And it's even blanked out there. The world that we live in, of course, uh, we have the natural world that we perceive through our five senses. And, um, you know, the, this kind of bottom layer here is referring to the church's ministry, but it, it also reflects the fact that what we see and hear and, and uh, a touch and so forth. And also, uh, the spiritual world. So there's the, the world that we can see, the natural world that we can see, but then there's the spiritual world that's incorporated in this level as well. Then, of course, there's another layer, and that is the outer heavens, which is the galaxies and so forth. And uh, we had a couple of different um, telescopes here and some different shots of the, of the outer uh, space and the, the galaxy and so on. I know Curtis, he likes to look at those kind of pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I, like, I like listening to documentaries on outer space and what they've discovered and what they haven't discovered. And, you know, um, God is a God of vast creative power. Right. And we don't see all of that. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Right? It's like the mi micro. We don't see all the stuff right. that God created on the micro level or the macro level. Right. But they still exist. And right. they're, they're operating at the same time. That's right. So so the microbiology level that's down here, that's at least four different levels. I yeah. mentioned the, the natural world. The scene see, level. The level that you can see. You and and the spiritual world that we interact with, especially yeah. through the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
Then, of course, as you call this, the macro world or the outer space. Outer universe world, world yeah. And then the micro, the, the micro world, yeah. And the, the interesting thing is is that uh, this is a, just a bonus point for creation, uh, is that when Darwin came up with his theory of evolution, he was not aware of genetics. No. He was not aware of the micro world. No. And so that blew a lot of his ideas out of the water. Yeah. Because then Gregor Mendel came up with uh, some discoveries about peas and yeah. their their gene their genes, yeah. genetics. Yeah. It's far more complicated. Oh yes, absolutely. God was creating genetics on the small, tiny <laughs> scale. Yeah. <laughs> and he's doing the universe at the same time. Right. So tonight we're going to talk about the Bible and how God, even in the Bible, is working on different tracks, different levels. At the same time. And at the same time. I've used the illustration here because we uh, are sitting above the railroad that uh, runs right beside the mall here and um, and it runs of course on two tracks and uh, I mentioned several times that as long as one of those rails is uh, you know staying consistent with the other one the train runs but if yeah. one of them happens to warp and bend inwards towards the other one you have a failure you have an accident you have a catastrophe yeah, right. the, the train goes off the rails. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, God is working at all of these different types of levels. He's even working at different levels in the Scripture. Now, last uh, time that we did a team teaching, uh, we were talking about how God uh, is working throughout the Scriptures, and there are male themes and female themes in the Scripture, and. Um, uh, the woman of scripture being referred to as uh, Jerusalem in the natural Jerusalem and ultimately the lamb's wife in the heavenly Jerusalem. In the right? Jerusalem, yeah. Okay, so we have those kind of themes going on. But there are other themes that God is dealing with in the Old Testament as well. And it's very important to understand. In fact, tonight we just came across this uh, verse as we were having our coffee together and um, you want to go to Hosea 14 and 9. Yeah, Hosea. Yeah, lots to say in Hosea. Yes, and the very last verse of this book uh, tells us why it's important to learn some of these things. Yeah, uh, why we need to study the Old Testament as well as the New. Yes, amen. Hosea 14, verse 9. If you would like to read along with us, yes, turn amen. with us. To Hosea chapter 14, verse 9 in the Minor Prophets. He says, Who is wise? Question. Let him understand these things. Well, what, what things? The things he just talked about yeah. for the last 14 yeah. chapters. Yes, right. right? Um, let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. So it's important to understand, and, and he uses several different themes even in the book of Hosea, you know. <laughs> well, it's a journey. Yeah. What we have to understand is is that uh, the truth is more than just a dot on the map. Right. It's a journey. Yes. You're, you're talking about true rails. Yeah. The train is on a rail yeah. because it's on a journey. That's it. And see, the thing is, is, is that we don't just understand one dot on the map. He says, let, who is wise, let him walk in them. So we're on a journey with the Lord. That means my understanding is not complete. I've got to keep walking with the Lord to gain yes. more revelation. Yes. That doesn't mean, oh, just so I can get a bigger brain. No. No, it means I, uh, that I, that the Lord can reveal his glory more. Amen. We want to be wise and prudent when it comes to the things of God. Absolutely. Right? So your and, revelation should be a journey. And, and that means you need to struggle with the scriptures yes. to understand it. Yes. If you say it's, it's too complicated, I can't understand it, then you're giving up. Right? Yeah. But we need to, to press in and really try to understand where and how these scriptures connect together. It's a lot like putting together a puzzle or building. I mentioned even the kids, uh, you know, using Lego and all that sort of thing to build little things. You know, you, they, they all plug into each other, right? They do. And so the scriptures plug into each other. And if you uh, fail to be plugging the right uh, themes together, you end up with a different scenario and different... Yeah, uh, your, your Lego castle's upside down. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You have to rebuild it. Lego castle's on, upside right. down. Dude. So God is working at different levels at the same time. Okay, let's go over to that blue uh, poster there that talks about the Father of us all. 
So this uh, portion of scripture comes from Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 16. It's uh, talking about the appearance of the workings of these uh, four living creatures. And it says it was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yeah. So I have a cog in the middle of a ring gear here. Yeah. Now that's that's like the workings of God. It, it's uh, like a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Or in uh, English, we might say, tell me the story behind the story. Right. One of the people that made that famous was Paul Harvey. And he always used to tell a story. And then he'd say, now you know the rest of the story. Yeah, well, he'd tell the story. And then they usually took a break, took a commercial or whatever. And then they'd come back and he would tell the story behind the story. Right. Now you know the rest of the story. Right. Because you now you know the story behind the story. Right. right? Yeah. So when we can know the story behind the story we get a better understanding of the workings of God now we have four creatures here these four creatures are mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 1 in this passage They've, they're mentioned again in Ezekiel chapter 10 and they're mentioned again in Revelation chapter 4 and in Revelation chapter 5 these four living creatures were uh, pictures or representations of the camp of Israel yeah so this is like the Old Testament uh, tabernacle and four major camps and they had three three different if you look on the screen and pull that up on your Google Drive you can see the, the, the different ones that are on each camp around it but on the north side of the camp was the camp of Dan and their standard if you read numbers chapter 2 ultimately fulfills this he is uh the eagle our great eagle that has risen with healing in his wings that's right heavenly eagle yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean you refer to eagles quite a bit i do then we have the lion over here on the east side of the tabernacle and jesus is the lion of the tribe of judah so this is the camp of judah here on the east side that's right and then on the south side we have a man Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. That's right. John 1 and 14. Well, Amen. this is actually Reuben, the camp of Reuben. Yeah. And uh, the man. And then the camp on the west side of the tabernacle is the bullock. Jesus came as the suffering servant. But that's this is the camp of Ephraim, yeah, which is the house of Joseph. Yeah, the house of Joseph. And, of course, Ephraim in the natural was one of Joseph's sons. Right. Yes. So uh, I put on here on the cross... What I shared uh, two weeks ago about the fact that Ezekiel 37, Curtis read that for us uh, last time, that it talks about uh, Ezekiel was told to go out and get two sticks, right? And to write on them Ephraim and Judah. Right. Right? Yeah. Now, you know, uh, as we told the story, I've talked with an Orthodox Jewish rabbi about this, and, and of course his impression was that the two sticks were to be like this. But if they're like this, you can't see the names on them, right? No, you can't. So um, I was trying to tell him, you know, and he says, hold the two sticks in your hand. It, it actually forms a cross. And Jesus, of course, finished the work and brings back reconciliation between these two houses. Right. right? And then, of course, as an Orthodox Jew, he wasn't ready to hear that. No, 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 no. So um, tonight we want to talk about the father for a few moments and uh and then we'll get into some other things so let's uh let's go first uh curtis to um uh, matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. this is the prayer that jesus taught his disciples how to pray and he begins with our father all right so matthew chapter 6 and uh, 9 to 13. 9 to 13. Follow, follow along with us matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 So God is not simply just a father, but he's our heavenly father. Right. You know, scripture tells us that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Footstool. That's right. Amen. Amen. So that's where we are standing tonight is on earth. And we stand here as the 
the feet of the body of Christ. Amen. On the earth. Amen. Uh, blessed are the feet of them who preach good news. Right. That's Praise right. God. So uh, this is uh, re referred or revealed to us in the in the Bible. Now we talk about going out and going and telling the good news of the of the gospel of Jesus. The, you know the good news is really uh, the blessings that have been revealed in the Bible. Yes. You know, the blessings that have been revealed in the Bible, we need to share with others, right? Yes. So, uh, praise God, we need to uh, understand that and uh, share those revealed blessings with others. Now, we are all a creation of God. Every person is a, is a creation of God, but we are not all children of God. No. So let's go over to John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12 there, Curtis. Yeah, very important to, distinct, to make that distinction. Um, uh, if you don't understand uh, the Scriptures properly, then we aren't wise. We start to say foolish things like we're all children of God. And I understand the intent when people say that, but in reality, they're not speaking with wisdom. It's not, a, it's not doctrinally correct. Yeah. No. And they're not speaking with the wisdom of understanding nope. that they need to have a relationship with God. Yeah, it's got to go through Christ. John chapter 1, verse 12. Yeah, so John chapter 1, verse 12, if you want to turn there and read with us. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him. Who's the him? Jesus. Amen. The word. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Notice there's a becoming there. Right. They weren't children of God. Right. Now they are. Amen. Why? Because they've received Christ. Yes. Okay, but not everybody does this. Not everybody receives Christ. Amen. So the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. What name? The Jesus. Name of Jesus. Right. And the right actually means the authority. Yes. Become. Yeah. I have the right to be called a child of God. Right. I have the right to call God my Father. We have the right to be here in this place because we hold the key. That's right. <laughs> it's we right have the authority to be here. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And, and so, um, <laughs> you know, today's culture is all about I know my rights. Right. right. But what about? Why don't we start with our spiritual rights? Right. Well, I have the right to be called a child of God. Amen. Because I believe Jesus. Amen. I received Him. Amen. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. Now, there are seven ones here in this passage. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 4 to 6. And there yes. are seven ones. But in the sixth verse, it tells us that we have one God and Father. So uh, that's uh, the key verse that I want to focus on. Right. So here are, is the sevenfold oneness of God. Yes. So here we go. Um, in Ephesians 4, verses 4 to 6. Eight. Or 4 to 6. You want to go to just 6? Yeah. 4, okay. 5, and 6. All right. Um, so 4 through 6, read along with us. Ephesians 4, yeah. verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Right. So there is a sevenfold oneness of God. And in verse 6, he says, one God and Father of all. Right. So that's the title here of my poster, the Father of all. Yeah. There's one God and Father of all. And he, uh, for all believers, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, it's either in a, every person as creator or he's in every person, not only as creator, but as Lord. Right. Right? Because we believe. Yeah. Amen. We've called on the name of Jesus for salvation. Right? Yeah. So um, that's a very important uh, truth to understand. So um, we're going to go over um, uh, to Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10. Here's an Old Testament verse. That also talks about the importance of the work of the Father. Malachi chapter 2 and verse yes, 10. Yes, Malachi 2 and 10. Let's turn together. Malachi 2 and 10. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Do we... Deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers. Amen. Wow. Amen. 
questions. Have we not all one Father? And you know, that's uh, most people today don't recognize God as Father. No. But we need to begin to understand that we can have a heart after God and we can get to know the heart of the Father. Right. As we begin to look into the Word of God and pray and ask the Lord for revelation. That's right. Or, or as you were mentioning there at the beginning, Hosea 14 and 9, that we get wisdom as we understand these things, right? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And so there's there's two aspects here, the Father and the Creator. Right. So right. we today in today's world, all human beings are a creation of God. Right. But only those who receive Christ are the have God as their Father. Right. They are the That's how it's fulfilled in Christ. Amen. Amen. So these are all uh, important things to understand. Let's go over to Acts 17, verses 24 to 28. Acts 17, verses 24 to 28. I believe uh, Paul is standing up. 24. Yeah, actually, verse. if you go back to 23, he's talking about, you know, the inscription to the unknown God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can start in 23 and go to 28 then. Yeah, okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for okay, so he's making this, this statement in Athens and he's he's in the midst of these people that believe in all these different yeah. gods. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so commonly known as Mars Hill. Mars Hill, yeah. yeah. So for as I was passing through and considering the object of your worship, I found I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him I proclaim to you. So he's taking something that's in the Greek culture yeah, already yeah. and telling them what it is. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Well, the Greeks were all about the yeah. temples. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, so hello, wake up, call. <laughs> he doesn't need your pillars of marble. No. All right. Uh, then he says, Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. He appoints boundaries to dwellings? Yes. Sounds like a border. Yeah, absolutely. He, he appointed borders. Absolutely. <laughs> wow! So God's in the borders? Amen. Pretty interesting. Verse 27, So that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Amen. So there you go. He was actually appealing to the culture of the Greeks. He actually did his homework. Absolutely. He actually understood a little bit about the Greek culture. As, absolutely. And then applied it to the gospel. That's pretty cool. Amen. Amen. So God is the uh, father of everyone who calls in the name of the Lord. He's the creator of us all. We are all a creation of God. And God is also the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And um, perhaps one of the verses that I uh, just quote, uh, you can look it up, John 1 and 14 says, you know, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We be out of glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, grace and truth. truth. Yeah. yeah. And then later on in John, uh, John the Baptist uh, witnesses Jesus and he's baptizing in Jesus, and then the, the voice in heaven says, This is my beloved Son. Right. The voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son, hear him. Yeah, that's God the Father speaking. Yeah. Now, this Jesus that God is the Father of, He is the first, uh, firstborn from uh, firstborn of creation, and He is also the firstborn from the dead. Right. So we need to uh, have that clear in our understanding. Let's go to Colossians one verses fifteen to twenty. All right. Let's go to Colossians one fifteen to twenty. Colossians 1, 15 to 20 says, He is the image, no, He is, that's Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created, 
that are in heaven and that are on earth, both visible and invisible. Remember that first graphic we showed you with the galaxy, yeah. the universe, all the little tiny cells? Yeah. All things were created by him uh, that are visible on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities, that's the spiritual or and powers. Invisible is a different level than visible. Yeah, visible <laughs> and invisible are two different levels, but apparently they're operating at the same time. Absolutely. Hello. <laughs> so, you know, we have to understand there's more than one thing going on at once, and we have yeah. a, t a tendency as to, and maybe I'm guilty of it too, we have a tunnel vision yeah. on our favorite topic, the scriptural topic, yeah. Yeah. but God's saying, well, you're not wrong, you're, just, you're only seeing part one level. Yeah. 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 There's other levels going on at the same time yeah. here. Yeah. So he says here in verse... Uh, Okay, all things were created through him and for him. That's verse 16. 17 says, And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Amen. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. And uh, it, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. That's all the fullness of the Godhead. Verse 20, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Wow, lots Amen. of stuff here. Well, you know, Jesus is the firstborn of creation, as we read here, and he's the firstborn from the dead. So that's a very important place to start to understand the scripture, because whether it's creation, or the work of eternal life, Jesus is the beginning of it all. Yeah, he is. Amen. Whether it's the yeah, the beginning of creation or the beginning of new life. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the start. Absolutely. Absolutely. He has always been. He's yeah. the eternal one. Yeah. Anything else you want to Well no, I, I thought that that's good. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Just for the sake of time. Uh, yes. So we we have a lot of things that we could share here tonight. Um uh, but I'm going to try to expedite this a little bit quicker, I think, because of time here. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. In Exodus chapter 4 uh, and verse 22, we have a very interesting verse. And um, you have to remember that in Exodus, the whole um, nation of Israel is in slavery in Goshen, right? In Egypt, right? Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Let's turn there. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Cooperate with me. Okay. Uh, Exodus 4, verse 22. Right. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Right. So God is speaking to Moses. To go and speak to Pharaoh. And... Uh, he, Tell him that Israel is my son, my firstborn. Now, I know that we have been sharing previously, two weeks ago, about the whole fact that uh, a lot of scriptures that deal with Israel, particularly when they fell away from the Lord and so on, refer to Israel in a female fashion. Yes. But here in this passage, it begins with God speaking through Moses to Pharaoh that Israel is his son, his firstborn. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just read that Jesus was the firstborn from the dead and the firstborn of creation. That's right. So here God the Father is saying that he is, uh, Israel is his firstborn uh, son. So we have to know that Jesus is coming through Israel, through Mary, to bring salvation to the whole world, that whosoever will. Yeah, yeah. All upon the name of the Lord. That's what I say. So there's a process going on. There's a story behind the story. There is a wheel, you know, and a wheel in the midst of a wheel, you know, that's going on. There's, it's kind of like looking at the inner workings of a watch, and you see all those little gears that are turning, yeah. or the inner workings of a transmission. You know, yeah, it's God more complicated. Has a lot more going on. Yeah, it's more complicated on the inside than yes. it looks on the outside. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, anything you want to add to that? I, I would say that um, when you look at this, it says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Um, then I, I think of the scripture where Jesus, uh, well, he was taken by his parents right. to, to Egypt. Right. 
and then the, he was removed. Then after Herod died, he took, came back to Israel or right. to Judea, and uh, then it was out of my Egypt. Right. There was a well, let's there. go to Hosea eleven and one. Hosea eleven and one. Now we we don't have time to read through this whole chapter, but the whole chapter is dealing with Israel and particularly with Ephraim. So uh, this is uh, pretty interesting. Isaiah 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Right. Right, right there. Now it goes on down. You see in verse 3, it's talking about Ephraim. It carries on talking about Ephraim to the rest of the chapter. It does. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Well, then, that's very interesting. Why is that important? Let's go to Jeremiah. And we're going to read Jeremiah 31 and 9. Because we have read uh, earlier that uh, Jesus was the firstborn of creation and the firstborn from the dead. But who is the firstborn of Israel? Jeremiah 31 and 9. Yes. So Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 9. Turn with us. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Amen. 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 I mean, you can you can uh, uh, go on there, Curtis, if you want to read uh, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah, ahead. let's go there. Yeah. Uh, Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of the strong one stronger than he. Therefore he shall come and sing in the height of Zion, streaming to the goodness of the Lord. And for wheat and new wine and oil, for the young and the flock uh, and the herd, their souls shall be like a well-watered garden, and they shall no shall sorrow no more at all. Right. Amen. So here you have a picture of Ephraim, who is the firstborn son, right? Yes. The firstborn son of e of Israel, and Israel is is God's son, and God is redeeming Ephraim, who has been scattered to the nations. He says, "Go to the islands and tell." Like uh, you know. So Ephraim has been scattered all over the world, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And God says he's going to draw them back. Yeah. Right? And he's drawn them back by the spirit of adoption. Yeah. All right? So here is now an Old Testament prophetic uh, word that is coming into operation in the New Testament. We're going to go to Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Yeah, All of this is being fulfilled through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's in Matthew 5 and 17. So, you know, it's, uh, and, and the, the spirit of adoption is, is here because, you know, there's no way that Ephraim even made sacrifice to allow himself to come back. Right. Right? So God made a sacrifice when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. That's right? it, yeah. So here we come to Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Right. So here we go. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. So, you yes. know, uh, Ephraim uh, becomes a mighty man, it says in the book of Zechariah. And uh, it's through him as he returns to the things of God that uh, God is redeeming him and drawing him back. And again, as we showed you on this little cross, uh, Ezekiel was told, put Ephraim on one of the sticks, and it's going to be uh, through these sticks that I'm going to be, uh, you know, bringing the houses back together, right? Correct. Yeah. You know? okay. That's right, the houses are coming back together through Amen. the cross. Amen. So in order to understand now uh, the, uh, 
the whole aspect of Ephraim, we need to go back to Genesis chapter 49. This is actually the um, uh, blessing, prophetic blessing, that uh, uh, Jacob, or Israel, is putting upon each of his 12 sons before he passes away, before right. he dies. That's right. So in, in uh, Genesis chapter 49, verses 22 to 26, it tells us what the blessing was over Joseph. Now, Joseph was the father of Ephraim, right? That's right. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, Genesis 49, verses 22 to 26. All right, let's go Genesis 49, verses 22 to 26. Read along with us. There, Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a well. His branches run over the wall, the archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Right. So the shepherd, Jesus, the stone of Israel... He didn't come through Joseph's line. He nope. didn't come through Joseph's house. He didn't come through Ephraim or Manasseh. He nope. came through Judah. Right. So the reference here of uh, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. That's a reference to the uh, mighty God of Jacob. Jacob is the person through which this shepherd would come. Yes. So that he was coming through Judah. And Judah came from Jacob. Right. right. So unless you understand these small little intricacies, you get this wrong. You think that, uh, oh, well, the the uh, Messiah is coming through jo uh, Joseph's house. No. Nope. The Messiah is coming, the shepherd is coming through Judah, who is one of the sons of Jacob, yeah. but not Joseph. Yeah. So uh, it's it's kind of that's tied in there. Yeah, in that's this. why it's in parenthesis. Right. Yeah. It's in this blessing, and the blessing is of a fruitful bough. Yeah. Now we need to understand that that the fruitful bough wasn't uh, completed just in Joseph's lifetime. That Joseph, it was. We're talking about the house of Joseph now. We're not talking just about Joseph, right? So let's go back uh, and take a look at what does the word Ephraim actually mean. Let's go back to Genesis 41 and 52. That's this is, uh, when Ephraim is, is born. And uh, why did Joseph call him Ephraim? What's the prophetic uh, um, substance to this? Uh, so here we go, Joseph's sons. Uh, Genesis 41, 51 verses 4. 40, sorry, verses 51 to 52. Right. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God may, has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Manasseh's name means making forgetful. Some people are forgetful. They forget everything. Yeah, leave them behind. And <laughs> they're, a for, yeah. they're a forgetful Jones. Yeah, right. And they but, forget everything. Yes. Yeah, but Ephraim actually means to be fruitful. Right. Right? But, here, but he, Manasseh is supposed to be a positive name, though, because yeah. he forgot his affliction. Yeah, he forgot his affliction. Right. right. Some people just forget, period. Yeah, no, that's right. What did I leave behind? No, that's good. You got the good, good out of that. <laughs> yeah. Right? The positive out of yeah. Manasseh. But the focus here is on Ephraim. Ephraim becomes the firstborn's blessing. Yes, yes, because we just read it in Jeremiah 31 and 9. Right. He is the firstborn. Yeah, and yet here in the natural, he's not. So, the, fr first so what gives? Fruitfulness is God's plan, God's purpose for the spirit of adoption to bring forth fruitfulness as we come back into fellowship and back into right. relationship with God. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's absolutely uh, right. So that's a, a, a tremendous uh, uh, revelation there. In fact, if you want to go back even further, God had promised uh, to Abraham. If you want to go to Genesis uh, 17 and 6, God had promised to Abraham that through him fruitfulness would come forth. And who, who knew that, you know, several generations later, Ephraim would be born, who had a name meaning fruitfulness. Yeah. Okay? 
Well, God knew that. And that's fulfilling the promise given to Joseph, his father, that the, the, the vine would go over the wall, that's which right. means would leave the house, right? Yeah. Go beyond. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's going a, 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 about beyond the borders. Amen. I got a neighbor who's got an apple tree, and his boughs come over my fence, you know. I'm yeah. all the time pushing his... And then, of course, the wind comes or something, and they flop back over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay, so Genesis 17 and 6. So Genesis 17 and 6. Turn yes, with us and read amen. with us here. For I will make you exceedingly fruitful. This is to Abraham now. Yes. I will make nations of you, and amen. kings shall come from you. Amen. So this is it, exceedingly fruitful. Amen. That's it. That's really the meaning of Ephraim's name. Yes, it's fruitful. Yeah. And, and, of course, uh, Joseph's mission was to have a fruitful vine that would go over the wall. Right. Right? Well, this is already prophetic of a, a, a man that is going to be known as the branch man who will bring forth fruitfulness from which we get the spirit that has been put in our hearts by the spirit of adoption. You right. know that your spirit of adoption that you receive as you receive Christ in you, the hope of glory, comes from the branch man. Yes. <laughs> Let's go over to Zechariah chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. All right. Going back to Zechariah chapter 6. Yes. Zechariah chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. Right. All right. Turn with us. Chapter 6, 12 to 13 says... Then speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, all capital letters, the yeah. branch. Yeah. From his place he shall branch out. It's prophetic of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And he shall build the temple of the Lord. Jesus said that, actually. Yeah. And he, and yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule on his throne. And he shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. There's a lot in there. Yeah. The king who is a priest. Right. That's the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, he is the branch man, so the, the fullness of the revelation of the, of the branch of Joseph that reaches over the wall is fulfilled in Jesus. Right. But the fruitfulness is reflected in the Old Testament because Ephraim was the one that was spread out to the nations and of course they all intermarried with the other nations and so on and God promises to bring them back right? to bring them back into fellowship with God how is he going to do that? he's going to bring them back into fellowship even with Judah you know, through the finished work of the cross Absolutely. and who does the finished work of the cross? the branch man right? The Frenchman, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Let, let's go back to uh, a few chapters earlier there. Chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. So Zechariah 3, verses 8 and 9. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you. And Joshua was historically the priest that was in right. office at that time. Right. Okay? But then he becomes like an object or an antitype of Jesus the high priest. Right. So hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. Amen. But Jesus had companions. Right. His, his disciples. Right. Praise God. That'll preach. <laughs> you and your companions who sit before you, they are a wondrous sign. For yeah. behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Amen. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. And behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Amen. That so is amazing. We, we don't have ch uh, time to go really into the whole of the teaching on the seven eyes. But the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God that yep. are before the throne in Revelation chapter 4. Yep. And they're also known as the it's the list of the seven spirits of God that rested upon the branch band that are listed in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Correct. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, um... But all of that is, is all being prophetic that the ultimate fulfillment is going to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said again in Matthew 5 and 17, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill it. Right? That's right. So Jesus is the branch. He's the ultimate son. 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it says, I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Right. That can only be through the cross of Christ. Through the finished work on the cross. That's right. One day. One Amen. day. Yeah. Let's go over to John 15, the first nine verses there. John 15. Here we have Jesus talking about the branch. <laughs> That's right. John 15. Yeah. Verses 1 to 9. Yeah. Let's go here. This is it. Yeah. John 15 is the vine chapter. Yeah. And then, so how many verses do you want to read? First nine verses. First nine verses. Yeah. Okay. So John chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. Read along with us. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Man. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. So I, I'm seeing again, this is the Ephraim theme being yeah. repeated again. Absolutely. The fruitfulness theme. Yeah. The Ephraim theme. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered, and they gather them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my father is glorified. The, the vine, he is the vine, and his father is the husbandman, and we are the branches. That's right? right. And he wants us to be fruitful. That's right. Fruitful. Amen. Amen. We're, and we're taking on the firstborn son of Israel's blessing. Amen. Fruitfulness. That's right. Fruitfulness. Amen. We want to carry that anointing, that blessing upon our lives. Amen. Praise God. Fruitfulness. Amen. Praise God. Uh, you know, we can go on into Galatians chapter 5. And talk about in Galatians 5, 22 to 26, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. I love, joy, peace. Here I am, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, um, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live in the Spirit... Let us also walk in the Spirit. Uh, so, you know, that's how it's going to be fulfilled, ultimately through Christ and through the Spirit of Christ that we have received in our hearts, the Spirit of adoption. That's right. how we're coming into the fullness of fruitfulness. Yes. We're receiving the anointing, the blessing that is upon Ephraim to be fruitful in our lives. Finally, uh, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 1, and with this we'll conclude because our time is gone. But in Revelation chapter 1, uh, Curtis, we see that the branch man is standing in the midst of the seven branches, and the seven branches, of course, carry the seven lamps, yeah. which are the seven churches. Yeah. Okay, and it goes along with your theme that you're teaching on Tuesday night there. That's right. So verses 12 and 13, and then jump down to verse 20. Okay, so Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, and then we're going to go to verse 20. Ready? Yes. Let's read along together. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. Um, then down to 20. That's right. And then verse 20, right? For, follow us to verse 20 now. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, which the seven stars, the seven stars which are the, the, are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands, which you saw are the seven churches. Right. So Jesus is standing in the midst of these uh, lampstands. Now the lampstands like a candelabra. Right, it has seven uh, branches coming out, three out of one side, like it's like the lamp of the Old Testament tabernacle, right? Three out Amen. of one side, three out of the other side, and then the center one, right? Amen. So there's seven, and it's a reflection of the seven churches, right? But Jesus is in the midst of the of the the branch. Amen. You know the branches, right? And he is. 
Praise God. So uh, the fruitfulness of Ephraim is uh, really fulfilled uh, through the spirit of adoption uh, that we receive and the, and the uh, ministry of the branch man that uh, we have entered into when we receive Christ. Praise God. Was there anything that was jumping out there that you wanted to... I just see there's a connection between Ephraim, the fruitful bough, Joseph's fruitful bough, Ephraim, and then the fact that Jesus calls us to be fruitful through him. Yeah. He is the branch man uh, that was prophetically shown as jo you know Joshua was the priest yeah. at the time. Jesus is the ultimate king priest. Right. He's the branch man. We're the branches. We bear the fruit. Right. Amen. So we have this theme of, of the firstborn son running parallel to the theme of the bride in the Old Testament. Yes. We have the, the formation of the cross. You see the cross and the camp. Yeah. The cross, the two sticks. Yeah, the camp actually forms a cross as yes. well. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then you have the cross with Ephraim and Judah. Yep. Which is, uh, you know, the two sticks that, you know, could be looked at this way or, or <laughs> this way. Praise God. All right. So, praise God. It's all fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's uh, pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, there are many things that you're doing on different levels throughout the scriptures. And, uh, Lord, uh, you call Israel your son, and it's through Israel that Ephraim comes forth. Because uh, Israel, prior to being called Israel, was Jacob, the man who had a family that became, you know, uh, 12 tribes and a nation, right? Yes. And Ephraim uh, is the house that, uh, or the house of Israel, the, the, the kingdom of Israel that went their own way and were sown into the nations, but God wants to bring them back, and he's bringing them back through the finished work of the cross. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that we can become sons, adopted as sons of God, Lord, and that we can come into that fellowship with the Father. You are Father of us all. And Lord, it's through you that we can become fruitful. We can have that anointing, that, that, that blessing that was on Ephraim, Lord. We can have it upon our lives. It wasn't just on Ephraim. I mean, it was given to Abraham, and then it was given to Joseph, and then it was given to Ephraim. And Lord, we can have that fruitfulness, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and gentleness, meekness, faith, and so forth, that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I pray that you lead us and guide us into all truth now, Father, uh, for the glory of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you thanks, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you, Father, for uh, building upon each layer, Father, helping mm -hmm. us to understand that, Lord, there's more to it than what yes. we already understand. Lord, uh, we, we've understood so much, but we have got more to learn. Yes, and we are on this journey, Lord, just like uh, Hosea says in his final uh, verse, yes. in chapter 14, verse 9, he says that those that are wise should understand this. The righteous walk in them. Amen. Walk in the wise statutes of the Lord. The righteous judgments of God. We're walking in them. It's Amen. a journey. Yes. Lord, we're taking one step at a time. Yes, we Lord. understand aspects of the bride from the Old Testament and we're now understanding aspects of the son from the Old yes, Testament. Lord. Lord, it's not just one layer, but Lord it's many multiple layers like the macro, the micro, and the seen world, and the unseen spiritual world. Yes, Lord, Lord. there's so, so many different worlds. Yeah. God has created the worlds. Amen. Uh, you know, I think there's a scripture that says that. Worlds, plural. Yes. God Amen. has created many worlds. And he's Amen. building it line upon line and, and precept upon precept. That's right, he's building Amen. it line upon line, precept upon precept. So Lord, yeah. we are excited yes, to go on a continual journey Amen. of dynamic understanding, dynamic growth of revelation. Yes, Our revelation Lord. continues to grow dynamically by the power of the Holy Spirit as yes, we read Lord. the ancient words of your holy word, the holy Bible, and Lord, the Holy Spirit brings them to life to us, revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, yes, Lord. revealing the glory of God. So Lord, bless these fine folks who have been watching us live and bless those who will watch us later. Amen. That will watch us on YouTube or Facebook later on. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless them and encourage them and let them be edified by your spirit and by your Thank word. You, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.